and welcome to this episode of the Alphabet of Hair, which is the letter W for wigs. I have a special guest joining me later on this episode, freelance editorial hairstylist Ali Prezade. Hopefully I've said that right. I've known Ali for many years as he used to work on my show team when he was a mere whipsnapper. He's gone on to become a very sought after hairstylist within the fashion and beauty industry. But first off, let me give you a brief wigstry lesson. The word wig is short for periwig, also known as peruke, which was a man's wig of the 17th and 18th centuries. It's thought that the word wig first appeared in the English language in William Shakespeare's The Two Gentlemen of Verona. Ancient Egyptians originally created the wig to cover shaved, hairless heads from the sun. They wore them on top of their hair using beeswax and resin as glue. Wealthy Egyptians would wear elaborate wigs and scented cones of animal fat on top of their wigs. Ancient Israeli Jews, Greeks and Romans also used wigs as an everyday fashion. After disappearing for a good thousand years, wigs reappeared in the 16th century as a way of compensating for hair loss or improving personal appearance. They also were a practical solution to the unhygienic conditions of the time. Hair attracted head lice, a problem reduced if the natural hair was shaved off and replaced with an artificial hairpiece, as there was no products. Fur hoods were also used in a similar preventative fashion. The royals played a huge part in reviving the wig. Queen Elizabeth I of England famously wore a red wig with tight, elaborate curls in a Roman style, whilst men, i.e. King Louis XIII of France, started to pioneer wig wearing in 1624 when he had premature balding. This fashion was then largely promoted by his son and successor, Louis XIV of France, who had a thousand wigs and more. His huge collection contributed to the spread of wig wearing in Europe and European influenced countries. Perukes or periwigs for men were introduced into the English speaking world with other French styles when Charles II was restored to the throne in 1660. These wigs were shoulder length or longer, imitating long hair that had become fashionable amongst men since the 1620s. Their use became popular also in the English court. London diarist Samuel Pepys recorded the day in 1665 that a barber shaved his head and that he tried on his new periwig for the first time, but in a year of plague he was uneasy about wearing it. Wigs became pretty much obligatory for men with any kind of social rank and the wig makers also gained considerable prestige. In 1665, a wig makers guild established itself in France which was copied elsewhere in Europe. Being a wig maker was considered a highly skilled job due to the elaborate styles where they covered the back and shoulders and also it flowed down the chest. The wigs were super heavy, often uncomfortable to wear and were expensive to produce. The best wigs were made from natural human hair, but the hair of horses and goats was often used as a cheaper alternative. In the 18th century, men wore powdered wigs to give them a distinctive white or off-white colour. Women in the 18th century didn't wear wigs, but wore coiffed hairstyles with attached artificial hair. Women mainly powdered their hair grey or bluish grey, and the wig powder was made from finely ground starch scented with orange flower, lavender or orris root. Sometimes it would be violet, blue, pink or yellow in colour, but was most often off-white. By about 1790, wigs and powder were only being used for older, more conservative men, and ladies that were being presented at court. After 1790, English women rarely powdered their hair. In 1795, the British government started a tax on hair powder of one guinea per year, and this tax caused the demise of both the fashion for wigs and powder. In the late 18th and early 19th century, men's wigs became smaller and more formal with certain professions like the Bishop of the Church of England and Ireland adopting them as part of their official costumes. This tradition still continues in a few legal systems. Wigs worn by barristers are in the style favoured in the late 18th century. Wigs became unfashionable again in the mid to late 19th and early 20th century, often worn only by old ladies who had lost their hair. Hairdressers in England and France started to make money by supplying postiches or pre-made small wiglets, curls and false buns that were incorporated into their hairstyles. The use of postiches continued even as women's hair got shorter in between 1910 and 1920, but eventually went out of fashion during the 1920s. 
In the 1960s, a new type of synthetic wig was developed using a mode acrylic fibre, which made wigs more affordable. The company Reed Meredith was a pioneer in the sales of these types of wigs. Over the last 10 years, wigs have made a huge resurgence in terms of hair trends. Many black women wore wigs to either give their own hair a rest from relaxing or styling, or to allow their own natural hair to grow out without getting damaged. This trend has evolved into celebrities wearing wigs to change their looks, whether it be temporarily for an event, a photo shoot, a video or public appearance. And as the bigger, more famous celebrities, for example, Beyonce, Rihanna, Nicki Minaj, etc., began to wear them more often, so their popularity has gone from strength to strength. Also, wig making techniques have improved over the years, so it's now become possible to wear the most believable wigs that can pass off as your own hair. So, that's the history lesson done with. Let's finally go and meet Ali P to look at all things wigs, plus what's good and what's not. I'm here with the lovely Ali P. <laughs> Hi everyone, how are you? Hello, how are you? Good. Thanks how for joining you? me. Thank you for having me. Ali, just your last name, Perzade. I always feel like, is that right? Is that wrong? It is sort of right. I guess Perzade is how you say Ooh, it. Oh, see, more but exotic. You're saying it better than a lot of other people, to be Pirzade. honest. Perzade. Yeah. Well, that sounds better than when I Pirzade. say it. Perzade. <laughs> Let me do that again. Perzade. Yes. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. So where's your name from? Where, what's your background? I'm born in Iran, mm -hmm. but then when I was three years old, we moved to Sweden. Right. So I'm raised in Sweden, but the name is like, yeah, Persian. It means mm. old soul, if you translate it. Oh, see, I love it. Yeah. My name doesn't mean anything, I don't think. <laughs> moody. So. I mean, that means being <laughs> moody. No, no oh, well, yeah, with the, the spelling. wrong spelling. Okay, yeah, yeah, with a Y, right. it means moody. <laughs> Mine's not the emotion, I always say. Okay. <laughs> so, Ali, tell us a little bit about your background as a um, hairdresser and also as now somebody who yeah. uses, works with, and designs wigs. So you have AP wigs, That's which correct, is one yeah. of the reasons why you're here, because they're amazing, and I wanted to I have mean, this is my them. favorite topic to talk about, so I'm so grateful to be here. Brilliant. <laughs> but I started hairdressing because my sister is a hairdresser, and when I was younger, we, you know, being Persian as well, like your parents want you to go into economics, or being a doctor or a dentist, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So I did study economics for a couple of years, and I was so bad at it. Oh my God, I was so bad at it. And I had a teacher that had like private tutoring with me, and then he called my parents in the end and said, this is not working. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> he can't understand Sorry, but... it. You know, just brain, some brains just shut down. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I work. And then they asked like, what do you want to do instead? And because my sister was a hairdresser, I just decided, yeah, that's what I want to do. Mm. And, and when that's was how that? I I was 16, 17 mm. at that. A couple of years ago. Yeah, a couple of years ago. <laughs> like two or three years ago. Yeah. I started assisting this hairstylist in Stockholm that did a lot of celebrity work and stuff. So by the time I started working, like going to school, mm. I already, like mid-education, I already started renting a chair and had my own clients. So when we were done, me and my sister just opened the salon together. Oh, wow. Yeah. In Sweden. In Stockholm. In Stockholm. And... We had that for about five years, mm. I think. Were you looking at fashion magazines and kind to of... To be honest, like, I know everybody, like, growing up have these references, like, oh, my God, we sa I saved all the Vogue since I was little and mm. stuff. That was so distant from my reality. So when I started working in salons, that's when I started seeing the magazines. Right, right. And then I never thought that is a job I can do. Like, I didn't think it was applied to me. But then a friend of mine wanted to be a makeup artist. So she used to bring the models to the salon and I used to do their hair and then okay. that's how agents started contacting me. Sort of was more of a slightly more natural profession yeah. rather than something that you forced and... Oh yeah, 100%. You know, it yeah. just started and I got a call one day saying, you know, we represent these hairstylists and do you want to come and mm. assist them because we've yeah. seen what you've done. And yeah. that's how it just... Amazing. And when did you move to London? Ten years ago now. Yeah. Which, which is insane how quick time goes. Yeah. But I met you before you were in London, right? Yeah. I started assisting on show teams and doing shows and trying to travel and do as much as I could. And London was a place I used to come to a lot, mm. even for shoots and stuff, assisting. Right, right. I started the travelling section of it when I was 26. Mm. So that was, yeah, quite 
Yeah. Let's not throw numbers out. <laughs> Just a while ago. A few years ago, yeah, but not that many. Yeah, a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how it started. Because mm. I felt London is a place I've always wanted to move to. Right. Just before I turned 30. Oh, I just said a number. Uh, I just decided I Which wanted to Which was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> Did I say I lived here 10 years? No, 10 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> not longer. <laughs> when did the week thing start to become something for you? Even before moving, I used to use a lot of wigs, but I was like going online trying to find good ones. And then, you know, I went to the stores we had in Stockholm and I never felt, especially blonde ones, mm. were really tricky to find. Right. And then when I moved to London, I went a wig making course. And that's how I started because my idea was I want to make all my wigs. Mm. I just want to, you know, produce everything myself. And that's how I started using wigs. And because I started looking into them factories with the mm. wig making course, I got good connections. And, you know, that's how it all started, to be honest, from the initial. Yeah. Point. It's funny, isn't it? Cause we were talking about just before we started filming, though, that making a wig is actually very time consuming. Yeah. And quite sort of, dare I say, boring. <laughs> it is, yeah. In terms I mean, of I how long it can take. No, I mean, I wouldn't yeah. either. And. So it's interesting that you sort of thought that in the beginning and that you mentioned <laughs> before we started filming that you were like, you actually realised you didn't want to make all your own wigs. Because I was like you, I mean, I, I, I've never actually been and studied making a wig, make, wig making, yeah. but I was frustrated with the wigs that I was getting for work. So as again, I mentioned to you before, a friend of mine, Amanda, started making them for me. Unfortunately, she moved to New York a few years ago, so it's made it harder for her to do that. So... I was then back to the drawing board almost in London, kind yeah. of going, well, where do I find good wigs from? And then our good friend Wendy said to me, oh, you should try Ali's wigs. Da, 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 da. So, you know, it's really good to have a recommendation, isn't it, with things like that? Because um, Amanda, I could sit and say to her, right, I want this colour, this colour, this colour, and I need this, the hairline like this, or whether it's a lace front, full lace, half lace, whatever. And... Yeah, when you don't have that as an option. Yeah, and I think for you as well, because you're knowledgeable about hair and the movements and where you want different things, and mm. like where you want it thicker or thinner. And yeah, actually, the ones selling the most is the custom ones that people want to just customize, right? And decide the different densities where they want it a bit thicker, when they want it a bit thinner, and so on. Guys, in yeah. an ideal world. Yeah. If you want a wig made for yourself, it's good to have your head measured so it actually fits you exact. You can get them adjustable, but it will never fit as well as one that's made to Especially measure. Especially when it's a full lace as well, because if you want it to be as seamless as possible, I think the fit is crucial. Yeah. Because if it really fits and it fits like a glove, you don't need to do the entire, like, I'm going to glue it down every time. You can mm. work around that a bit more. Yeah, yeah. We've chosen an array of wigs, haven't we, to yes. show everybody the difference. So we've gone from cheap as crap. <laughs> <laughs> or should that I could say, be fun as well, though. That can be you know, fun, could yeah. Be fun. But they are generally not human hair. No. <laughs> They're like, you know... Um, Sort of almost quite, I don't know, what type of hair is it? Like synthetic? It's very of? synthetic. It's glass yeah. fibres, I think. Yeah. But, you know, good for a night out, fancy dress. But then we've got a selection right the way through to, like, Ali's top of the range wigs in his collection. So we're going to show you everything so that you can see the difference and we can explain the yeah, difference. Yeah, let's do that. Right. And which one should we start with? Let's start on that side. Should we start with the cheek yeah. part first? <laughs> so, this is real human hair. Right. And it has a mono silicone base, which means... Let's show that to the camera. Yeah. It gives you the illusion of a scalp. Yeah. But everybody thinks differently. I prefer full lace because I feel this doesn't breathe as easily. You know, mm -hmm. I d it is soft towards the skin, but it still gives you a surface where full lace just lets the scalp breathe more. Yeah, yeah. And so, and this is a track back. So this is how it looks when it's all mm -hmm. just track sewn. Yeah. You know, when we work, it's so tricky. Like if that would show, yeah, yeah, people yeah. would not. Because what happens, guys, is see at the back here, because there's not that much hair attached to, no. to the actual wig. So then you get lots of gapping, which on a photo shoot isn't great. You know, for somebody that just wants to have a little fun and change their look for the day or so. Yeah. It's yeah. fine, you know. Yeah. And, and what, what price point would you say that is? 
I feel like we're on Good Morning. <laughs> <laughs> Is this one? <laughs> because it's a blonde. Because generally, you should always remember a dark one compared to a blonde one. The blonde one is always going to be more expensive. Yeah. So a regular, if that would be a dark one, uh, that would maybe be like hundred and twenty pounds. Right. Not even. Yeah. Because it's like, human hair. Though, yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But it, because it's blonde, maybe like hundred and ninety, two hundred, under mm. two hundred. I think yeah. that would be. And guys, just to let you know, the difference with having human hair means that you can style it better. Yeah. Because you can treat it like it's your own hair, whereas the synthetic hair, some you can't actually put any heat on. Depends on what the fibre is in yeah. it. Because there is some of the fibres that they use on wigs that you can put heat on up to a certain temperature. I mean, if I use synthetic wigs, if I would do, I haven't done it for a long time, I'm not going to lie, I would just steam it. This is a synthetic one, mm -hmm. right? But what I wanted to show with this one, it does have the track backs as well. But what this one is, what we call that is a hard front. Yeah. So it looks like it's just cut off in the front. And you have wigs that are similar, that are mono. like, And that's why I prefer not to use mono if I don't have a fringe. Because if mm. you don't have the fringe, I always think you see a hard front. Yeah. It doesn't Showing. look natural enough, does it? With no. The hair I mean, on. she's had a little bit of teasing going on. She was is... Marilyn for a moment, I think. <laughs> oh, fabulous. <laughs> Pink Marilyn. Yeah. yeah. But this is, how much would this cost, do you think? Oh, God, that I think was about £50. Pounds, this one. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Yeah. I can't remember offhand. So, what's the next one, Ali? Let's see. The one I wanted to show as well is this little short one. Because it has the track back. And then it has the monofilament on top, or which right. we call mono. And so which bit's the monofilament, just to show people? It's this little U part right. right here. So actually, the bigger the part of monofilament it is, the more expensive it is. Let's We're go. slowly getting more expensive, everyone. <laughs> so let's keep, do this one first. This is what you call a lace front. This has been used a little bit. And then you have the single uh, track back. So... It means all the tracks in the back are just single layers, so they're quite thin, but they have a lot of it. Do you see the comparison, how many more this is compared, compared to, to the that? other yeah. one? Yeah. And what this does, so it gives you the illusion of having a natural hairline, mm. and then you have the thickness of the tracks. Yeah. Because you hear so much now about lace front wigs, don't you? I mean, yeah. it's become, you know, a lot of people are... It is a thing, and if it, a lot of people are wearing it. The only thing with like lace, it is a bit more delicate, and you have to be a little bit more careful with it. Yeah. Where a mono one, you could just throw on. It doesn't, you know, stretch yeah. or get looser. But but you can get stretch lace, can't you, as well? Yeah. yeah. I mean, most of them That's should a have a stretching. little bit of stretch in it. What happens is a lot of people wash them, and then they put it on their wig heads, and they don't actually think that when lace... Is like any other fabric when it's wet or damp, it stretches. Yeah. So yeah. depending on what you put it on, so it don't stretch your lace, girls. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Or boys. <laughs> <laughs> so the difference as well is with a full lace, it's a three sixty situation where you can put it up in a ponytail. You could like yeah. trick, you know, and do the entire. Almost thing. treat it like your own hair yeah. Right? yeah where lace fronts is you glue the front down and then that's it it yeah. has to be down talking of which just looking at how it they fasten inside because mm -hmm. obviously this one has got combs i in. do love the combs yeah i think the combs are a great so that makes it more detail. secure it makes it more secure yeah and it just helps it stay on without bulking up a lot of people pin them and they start ripping the lace after yeah, a while. Yeah. And that is never good. Don't pin your lace. No, don't pin your lace. And then you've also got these little yeah. buggers here at the bottom, haven't you? Which a lot of wigs have these, these little clips. Obviously, this is already a done wig you buy mm. over the counter. So this is just to adapt the size to everyone. Yeah, yeah. It's actually really good that you can adjust it in that yeah. way. But... Because if you're like me, you've got a bigger head, right? Then you need to sort of loosen this out a little bit. Next one. So this is uh, also a lace front, but then tracks in the back. But what we wanted to show here is the difference between 
a machine tied wig yes. and a hand tied wig because yeah. it is a big difference. Because if you can tell, a machine tied lace is very straight and it's very blunt. You don't、mm. have the softness of different dimensions and different densities,、mm. which is fine for somebody that is a bit more knowledgeable. Then you can go in and you can pluck it and you can adapt it. Yeah. But a lot of people, you know, we see all these ads, especially now on Instagram, they pop up and like, oh, look at this natural wig, buy this、yeah. wig, that wig.、Mm. And those clients buying those don't really think about, I mean, you shouldn't think about, oh, I have to pluck it, I have to do this. Well, they don't ever say, do they? No. Machine made or handmade. They、no. never differentiate one from the other, which I think is kind of. Annoying in a way because you want to know, you want especially to know. people like us. And this is, you know, this is great hair, this is Brazilian, but like when you look at it, that is so harsh. Like you wouldn't, you have to put、yeah. quite a lot yeah. out. Yeah, so it doesn't look so natural, does it, as a hairline?、No. Yeah, but when it is machine tied, the price is a little bit lower, but、mm-hmm. then you have to do a lot of work yourself when、yeah. you get it. Yeah, where I prefer, so these are our ones, but they are all. Hand tied. I've got to tell you, by the way, look how fabulous this is. It's like so long. <laughs> it's 50 inch. She's Rapunzel. If you've seen my Instagram, you see she's been out rocking <laughs> for a lot in the garden during quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> But if you see the comparison with this lace and how that was tied in the front,、mm-hmm. that is so much softer. Put it my hand again. Yeah. This is all hand tied. So we have it goes from 100. 230 density. Density means how much hair is tied、mm-hmm. in every square millimeter. Right. And so this goes from 100 to 130, and then what we've done at APW, we always try to have 150 in the nape area just、mm-hmm. to give it a bit thickness. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, you see, look at that there. Yeah. So it looks so much more natural. Even、yeah. when you just do, it, do that to it, isn't it? It's kind of. It's just not this hard line? No. So that is a difference, and I do think hand tied is always the way to go, to be、yeah. honest. And this is the new. This is another、type. AP wig. Yeah,、right? and this is the HD lace ones we do. So just explain what the HD lace is. So HD lace, so the standard wig is、uh, a size 30, which means the knot sizes, how big they are on the lace. Where HD goes down to 20, so it is a bit more delicate.、Mm. But we were comparing, weren't we, a little、yeah. bit just before we、uh, filming? And one, the、uh, HD is very slightly finer, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is slightly finer. And in films, and like with the, f- is it 4K quality yeah. videos? Yeah. You want it to be like it's actually. Easier to work with these because they blend in a bit easier.、Mm. I think it's a little bit too delicate for a client、yeah. at home just you know,、yeah. wearing it day to day.、Mm. And what HD as well is you can never have full lace, or that's what I think because it becomes a bit too weak. Right. So it's always track backs and then lace front. Yeah. And you divide, I mean, this is quite wide compared to the other ones. Mm hmm. So it depends on what you prefer. Yeah. But for a day to day wearer, I would prefer like the s-、yeah. size 30 of the lace. I mean, ideally, full lace probably looks the most real, doesn't it? Yeah. From, like you say, from a 360 point of view. You know, so even if you tied the hair up, it still looks like there's a hairline underneath and、yeah. it kind of feels the most real, I guess. And you know, you go for realness. Exactly. And especially because if you imagine, this is all hand tied. So, with movements, it would literally move individually, strand、yeah. by strand.、Mm. So, Ali, some of your wigs, you've, you were saying you've now attached this elastic band、yeah. for the fitting as well, haven't you? Which you said is going to be standard. Which is this one. So, what, I've, what we've done, because we know we have. Standard sizes, small, medium, large, but then you have the custom ones. But the standard sizes all come with this elastic in the back.、Mm-hmm. So, not even, you know, you have the regular elastics,、mm-hmm. but this one, what it does, first of all, it protects, you know, protects it from falling off. It keeps it down on the head because、mm-hmm. this goes below your nape. Right. And then it just adapts it a bit more to the fact that 
if it doesn't fit you, it will still keep it intact and you can mm. move it around and it gives that security. Another reason for this dog, which is good to say, is when you put this on and then you put the comb underneath. Ah, so it really secures yeah, it. Yeah, so it yeah. really secures it. So mm. if nobody comes and like pulls it off, it stays where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're out for the night. <laughs> yeah, just as long Someone. as you don't headbang Someone. or flip it yeah. too much. <laughs> And don't go into arguments. Yeah, like exactly. Fights, yeah, 100%. So price-wise, Ali, obviously we talked about the prices of the, the mm -hmm. cheaper ones. Now we've got to the sort of top end of your range. What kind of price point are we talking about? Yeah, let's say from 400 up to like 2000 and more if you want to. Yeah, yeah. It all depends on how much you want to, you know, mm -hmm. customise it. And do you do them in sizes? So... I don't know, like small, medium, large, or... The wig yeah. itself. Mm. Yeah, so you have them in small, medium, large, which is the standard hairline as well. But then, if you customise it, the way you measure your... So the measurements we ask for will show us if you have a widow's peak or where the shapes of your hairline changes, mm. and then you adapt it to that. Right. Yeah. Ah. And so, how much would be your most expensive one, then? I mean, right now, I think this 50 inch, but that is quite rare. So That's it's come, long, yeah. right? And that is around 2000 plus VAT. So yeah. that is like the more expensive one. So one of the things I wanted to do in this video was to show how you do your wigs yeah? and, and, okay. and apply them. So we're going to bring in a new model. Ali will demonstrate on, so you'll be able to see how he does his amazing work. Exciting. Let's bring her in. <laughs> Okay, everybody, say welcome to my fabulous model. <laughs> she's arrived and she's ready to get her look done. <laughs> Not going to talk. So, everybody, now I'm going to install a unit on Neil and start off with, I'm just going to wet his hair and brush it back so we have a more flat surface to work on. Just so you get a clean surface to glue that wig down, always take rubbing alcohol and wipe the skin around it. Mm. Just to get rid of oil residue or anything that would weaken yeah. the... Or makeup, right? If or makeup. Got makeup on. Next step is put the wig cap on. And the method I'm going to do here on Neil is what you call the ball cap method. And you pull it down, cover the ears, and then what you do is where you want to have the hairline, where you want to glue the wig down, you start using got to be spray or gel and spray. What I usually do is I do one layer of the got to be gel and then uh, dry that in in the second layer of the got to be glue. And that just secures it. So when you have put the ball cap on and it's covering the ears, do a little cut in the middle here because in this way we're going to get rid of the air pockets that you have that are created so when you do that you just see it goes flatter in and it doesn't get that air pocket so when you gel it down it gives you a flatter surface to work on so when this is done the next step is to see where the lowest part of your hairline is which is here in the middle on nail in the widow's peak and start gelling from that point down meeting the hairline and around the temples here. So I use the got to be glue and do one layer of that across the entire hairline, dry that in and then we do a second layer with the spray. So when the gel is now finally dry, so we're starting with the second layer, which is the got to be glued, and we just follow the actual lines that you've done with the gel. And So 
So when that is all dried in, start with cutting the wig cap just by the ear, just to loosen it a bit. There you go. And then what you do is you follow the gel area that you created. So would you do this on most shoots you were doing? On shoots I would do it. If it's not a yeah. fringe involved, yeah. I always do this. Mm -hmm. When you have gelled the entire line, use a tail comb or the paintbrush you use to gel the edges down and start pressing. And if you use the paintbrush, roll it down while you dry it with the blow dryer just to get it as flat as possible. So when the edges are dry now, cut off the excess fabric. That is done. Use a foundation or concealer that matches your skin color. And I would do this especially around the like parting area or along the hairline. So when this is done, it's time for us to secure the wig. So let's just turn towards the camera. Okay. Take the unit. This is the fabulosity that we've chosen for Neil this evening. I love the fact you call it a unit. <laughs> <laughs> so lean your head back, Neil and hold a finger in the front bit, okay? And I really want to show as well, and let go, what we mean when we say, you know, make sure it's the right size, mm -hmm. and always make sure it's a little bit snug, because when it follows your head shape, it should lay flat like that mm -hmm. and that just makes it almost easier as well if you don't want to glue it down because if you look let's see, towards the camera again this bit on Neil is really really tight and it's following his head shape so when you move it around it feels quite secure doesn't it yeah very yeah and it literally, you could get away with just wearing it like that. Yeah, without then, glue. Yeah, without yeah. glue. But we're just going to show how we glue it down. So you can flip it around a bit. It feels fabulous. <laughs> glue it around. I need music. <laughs> when you have placed it where you want it, start folding the lace inside out. And put a grip on the sides just to keep the hair away. you do that on both sides there you go and then you can start building with the gel or the adhesive whatever you want to use but we thought here on Neil today we're going to use one side I'm going to show you how to do the got to be method and on the other side I'm going to use the supreme ghost bond and this Neil I actually bought when I was doing a music video and I knew there were going to be a lot of movement in choreography yeah and if you sweat a lot and it's a lot of movement, it actually holds it much stronger and much better. Mm -hmm. So I really recommend this one as well. That would probably be the one I would have because <laughs> I do sweat quite a lot. <laughs> so, But the method is going to be the same. So the more layers you do, yeah. the better, like the harder it stays on. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do two layers of the gel and two layers of this and then you can cool. feel the difference. Yeah. So one side I'll be able to dance with, the other side I can't. Yeah, it's like a lot of which side do you have. <laughs> so take your gel, follow that exact hairline you've done. And now we're going to do the other side with the Supreme Ghost Bond Adhesive. And it's mm -hmm. the same steps we're going to do. So it's two layers. Do one layer, dry it, and then 
Do the second layer and it's supposed to stay tacky. Is it the specific brush you're using? I usually, I mean this one is a foundation brush to be honest I think. Okay. But what I usually use is paint brushes, like if you look at my kit. Yeah because I heard you say that on your video that you yeah, use paint I brushes. I always have different paint brushes with me and I think they're the best and it's really easy to clean them out as yeah. well. Yeah. And it doesn't damage it when you use all the alcohol to clean it out. Mm -hmm. So when you've done your two layers and you dried it until it's tacky, take your clips away from your wig. And when I press it down, I usually start in the middle and build my way down. Any particular reason for that? So it doesn't bucker and lift yeah. and stuff, because yeah. otherwise it can become... So I think if you have a flat surface to start with, it's easier to just work it down with. Yeah. And what I also do, I usually take a really thin layer of hair in the front, mm -hmm. so you can actually use that to pull the wig down. And then when you keep building it, make sure you literally pull it forward to where the hairline is and press it. And as you see here, I take a little hair in the front, pull it forward and press it down. One. And what, when you do this as well, which is great, is you actually camouflage the edges as well because the hair you're pulling forward is folding itself a little bit, so it just creates that hairline. And another good trick is a lot of people think because they have wigs that they need to press this down as flat as possible, mm. but naturally, just around the hairline, you naturally would have a lift that creates this little wave in the front mm -hmm. and that is something that I always try to keep when I do uh, secure wigs down that I really want to keep that lift coming from the scalp so it doesn't go too flat and hides. And then I'll brush this bit back, take a little pieces around here, put that behind your ear but leave these little bits because then from that we're going to create just natural uh, baby hairs around. So all of these steps we're doing now is if you want to be able to put it behind your ear and you want to have a supernatural hairline. If you would just wear it for the day, I wouldn't necessarily do this, but you would just put it on and shake it out. And yeah. Go, you know. Yeah. But this is just a little bit more advanced. Mm -hmm. So what I do when I've done that and you have the parting, I'll take anything that you have, a ribbon or a band of some sort, this fabric band and then put it along the hairline go all the way around so I go under the hair clean that bit out put that forward and make sure you tie that down and let me know when it's starting feeling tight is that okay there yeah and do that and just press it down with your hands. I'm just wondering what I look like now. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe she's going sporting. She's I do good. feel like it could be a bit sporty here at the moment. This is really good because what we need to remember the adhesive we're using or the gel, the point is to secure it, but also you want it to bleed through the lace a bit. All right. When you've let that sit for a bit, the longer you have it, the better. But for the sake of the video, we're now taking it off. And Neil is kind of look fabulous already. So, <laughs> so what this does, it secures it down, but it also makes the adhesive go through the legs. And this is the lift I'm talking about that I really, you know, I think these small details makes the big difference. So that to me is how a natural, you know, natural hair would grow out of your scalp. What I'm going to do first, and I'm just going to cut these little baby hairs and do like natural movements in the front. Mm -hmm. What I think is important is 
I wouldn't cut a straight line. What I do, I go quite short and then I go zigzag back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Just to get the different le lengths out. When that is done, use a little bit of hairspray on your toothbrush and sometimes I just use water depending on how firm I want it to stay. What I usually like to do is do a natural swoosh that just bleeds into the hair. So it's more about just camouflaging the edge a little bit but also get that little slight natural movement. And this is, as I said, just something I like to do. So it's so what that does that gives you the you know, illusion that it's just growing out. I'm flawless. <laughs> is she feeling fabulous? Fabulous. And the longer you have, and the more you could actually, you know, let it be tied down and yeah, take that time. Yeah, yeah. The better it blends. But these are the steps that are really good. But I usually tell people though, because <clears throat> maybe this scares some people, mm. but you don't need to do all of these steps. This is just the extra step. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes I think the ex doing the extra things are like what makes it that little bit better, isn't it? Yeah. You know I mean? No, 100%. Yes. So guys, this is my finished wig and um, it's amazing. And Ali's joined me too. So um, we're both living a blonde up. fantasy. <laughs> I mean, this is my alter ego. I wish I always looked like Well, this. we do see this one quite a lot on your Instagram, don't we? Yeah, and yeah. that one. And this one. <laughs> <laughs> but now I've adopted this one. I'm going to say, you might not get this back. <laughs> Let's see when you flip your hair then. Exactly. Ready? <laughs> anyway. I mean, mine is, mine is not secured, though. No, his isn't secured. <laughs> Mine's secured, so I can go far. But where are we going now? <laughs> Or rather, when are we going out? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now? When? Yeah, when? Let's go now. Are we going down to the off lights? Yeah. <laughs> and so, all that leaves me to say is a huge thank you to Ali for sharing all his wig knowledge. I hope you've all found that extremely helpful. To follow Ali on his Instagram, go to at Ali Perzade, which is A L I P I R Z A D E H. And to check out his AP Wigs range, you can go to at AP Wigs on Instagram, or better still, check out the website www.apwigs.com. See you on the next one. If you like this video and want to see more, then you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is here. And you can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.